What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today we're going to be taking a look at some new arrivals on Blade HQ. It's been a, it's been a little bit since I've done uh, this video. I've got other videos like this, uh, but I wanted to wait and see some, uh, you know, see some new interesting things. And I looked through the first couple of pages and I thought, yeah, there's some stuff here that I think people might be interested in. Uh, a lot of you might be thinking, Metal Complex, why do I need to sit through a video when I can just do this myself? You're exactly right. I will be linking the new arrivals page on Blade HQ at the very top of the description so that if you don't want to sit through a video of me talking about these things and commenting on them, then yeah, you can just go check it out for yourself. I'm going to be highlighting a few things and uh, you know, the ones that I highlight, I will link uh, right down underneath that link so you guys can check out those things specifically. Um, but yeah, there's some really interesting stuff here. Please follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. And if you'd like to check out my Patreon, there is, of course, a link down in the, the uh, description for that as well. Your support would mean the world to me. All right, so right off the bat, they have pushed these coming soon listings for the Kaiser Vanguard Sheepdog Liner Lock in Green Micarta. Now, this is a coming soon. It's not a new arrival specifically, but the fact that it's in the new arrival section suggests that it will probably be here soon. This is interesting because to my knowledge, the medium sized uh, uh, sheepdog has never been in their Vanguard line. It's always been the titanium medium sized one that's in their higher end line. So that's kind of neat. I kind of, let's pull up this one. First off, the price on these is really good. I, I have high hopes for something. Uh, and for, look at the, the steel there, CTS uh, BD1. Interesting. I was thinking it might be 154 CM, but that's fine. I don't have a problem with BD1. Doesn't uh, hold an edge forever, but it's very easy to sharpen, nice and tough, and to my knowledge, stainless. Truthfully, I don't have a lot of experience with it, but this particular one this is a good size. I, so I have the XL Sheepdog and it's it's fun, but it's huge. And then I've handled the mini one and it's cool, but it's just a little, it's too small. This is kind of a Goldilocks situation where the medium one is probably going to be the best size for most people. 7.75 inches overall, 3.25 inch, uh, inches on the blade length. This combination of this color of micarta and the black um, uh, blade is quite nice. I like that pocket clip. Uh, I like the whole look. I think that's really cool. There we go. There's the, those look at, those look like the, the larger, like the XL ones, right? Um, but uh, I think this size is, um, I think that's uh, pretty preferable. So that's cool. So if you want to pick that up, uh, you're going to want to come to this page and click on the email me, uh, you know, when available option so that you can get notifications for that. That Nathan Dewey custom gremlin mini balisong butterfly knife. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. All right, scrolling on down here, we've got uh, Spider Command X2 Black G10. Is this is this different? What is this? No, it's just a Man X2 with matte satin with a matte satin finish. Okay, so it's this is okay I, I know everybody knows about the manix 2 but you know like something that's been happening with spider co recently is that a lot of price increases have uh you know occurred across the board on a lot of different models the manix 2 is one of my favorite spider co's of all time and as you can see by the price these are still very reasonable this is an excellent buy i we haven't talked about the manix 2 in a long time but this is still one of the greatest DDC folding knives of all time, in my opinion. I prefer the G10 version over the uh, the lightweight version. S30V G10, and you get that very strong, um, uh, uh, oh my gosh, cage lock with the ball bearing. Um, yeah, if you want an American Spider Co. and you don't want to pay the prices for some of the models that have had price increases, the Manix 2 is the way to go. Uh, that's a nice looking one from Boker, the Boker Plus Aphex. Collection 2020 frame line. Okay, interesting. I've always been interested in the Andre uh, De Villiers uh, pocket butcher. Um, those are always those have always looked really classy and cool. I'm actually gonna I'm gonna click on this one. These are uh, these are expensive. These are mid techs. They're using Bowler N690. That's an interesting choice. Uh, 6.75 inches overall. 2.875 inches on the blade length. Really nice engraving going on. There's just a nice classy look. Oh, they got a pocket clip on. I didn't realize. They had added a pocket clip to these. To my knowledge, the older ones did not have pocket clips. That's cool. I haven't looked at those for a little bit. And honestly, I've never handled one. But they sure do look nice. All right. Moving on here. Oh, okay. Um, mini Sheepdog and Carbon Fiber. And likely, sorry, my phone is going off right beside me. 
I'm gonna move back that that back there to the freezer. Uh, and then they've got carbon fiber and like a black stone. I wanna see real quick what steel, yeah, these are S35VN. So these are the higher end versions. That all black one is pretty sick. Uh, that's cool. Um, so yeah, those are ones that you, there's those you can actually buy right now. So if you're interested in those, you can pick those up. Combat, tro wait, no, it's a, it's a Troodon in orange and black. That's pretty cool. Uh, M2R Pro Gunmetal Gray. I uh, actually uh, unboxed this knife here recently, or not knife, light recently. And uh, there we go, the XM24 4-inch Sheep's Foot Flipper. This is the first time that the Sheep's Foot has been available on the XM24. Uh, this is a triway as well. Let's find a let's find a real pretty one to look at. Maybe we've got a, another page of these. Yeah, let's see here. Which one do I want to click on? I think I'm going to go back a page and click on the one that initially appealed to me, which is right here. Yeah, let's go with the uh, blue and black. So this is a big knife. I own an XM24. These are huge. Um, the uh, sheep's foot blade is something that people are really going to like. I think it'll um, complement the um, very, very thick blade geometry of the XM24 uh, a little bit better. I mean... These are 185 thousandths on the spine. The XM24 is a notoriously monstrous knife, and they are they are pretty thick behind the edge. But mine is a Spanto, which is about as thick as it gets for Hinderer. Um, the Sheep's Foot is definitely a thinner blade grind, a thinner blade profile. So if you really like the idea of the XM24, whether you've owned one or not, I think the Sheep's Foot blade is probably going to do it. A little bit more justice in the um, in the uh, performance department. Um, I'm interested to see the other side of this. No, okay. So here's the weird thing about the Sheep's Foot. On the the Sheep's Foot debuted Gen Five for the XM18. It was on the XM18 three and a half inch. And the thing that everybody found weird is that it actually had the screw heads on both sides. Traditionally, Hinder knives have these Chicago screws, right? But on the Sheep's Foot. For the XM18, it had the screw heads on both sides. That is the case with the Eclipse and some other models, right? But uh, when uh, asked about this, he said it's because of the profile of the blade. The belly dips down low enough that it they use a different type. They use a different type of standoff, one that would more closely resemble the Eclipse to allow for the blade to close without coming in contact with the standoffs. And they did not do that here. So the XM24 frame must allow enough depth for that to not occur. That's something that I was interested to take a look at and I wanted to wait until I did the video to talk about it. These are expensive uh, elephant in the room for people. Oh my God, $635. This is a full American made knife. Everything's made in house. They are hand tuned, hand assembled, hand checked, blah, blah, blah. If you don't know, I'm a gigantic Hinderer fan, a huge Hinderer fan. I've got uh, almost 70 uploads in a playlist dedicated just to Hinderer knives. I've personally owned about 27 different Hinderer knives uh, of my own. I love them. Um, I can recommend them. Uh, the XM24 is definitely, it's not the one that I recommend people start with, but if you've been curious, is it high quality? Is the flipping action there? Is it gonna satisfy me as a person who already wants to spend this type of money on a knife? Yeah, definitely. Um, it's cool. Just, um, you know, if you want to check out my review of uh, the XM24, you can go do that. But there are a ton of these available right now. And once these are gone, they will undoubtedly become this thing that people decide they want, down, you know, and then they have to seek them out on the secondary market. So, you know, if it's interesting to you, then check it out for sure. Boker Kalashnikov Bowie Dual Action OTF. What? The, Kalashn the Kalashnikov OTF? Huh. Okay. That's cool. What steel are they using? D2, $119. Okay. So, you know, initially people, $119 for D2. This is an OTF, right? So OTF has different price. There's more. It, it costs more money to manufacture an OTF, right? Yeah, you can get a Lightning for 35 bucks, and it's made out of, who knows, 440C steel, maybe. Is it heat-treated correctly? I don't know, right? You get what you pay for. 
uh, the comp, you know, there's, there's, there's no like uh, magic altruistic company out there. Who's just like, I, you know, we're going to price these in a way that, you know, we don't really care about the growth of our company. We're only concerned with making sure that, you know, everything, no, every, every company is concerned with growth, trying to, you know, create profit in their designs, but they have to work with a certain cost that goes into whatever it is they're trying to create. Ultimately, what I'm trying to say is $119 is a pretty good price for an OTF that comes from a company who's notorious for making a model, the original Kalashnikov, that does stand up to the test of time, right? Now, if they, if this translates into this OTF model in D2 and aluminum, that's not a bad price. It's not. There's some other Chinese companies out there that are using 154 CM uh, and aluminum in this price range. And uh, you, some people prefer D2 over 154. I like 154, but this is interesting. It does follow the handle lines of the, um, the Kalashnikov. Um, so it's very Kalashnikov y. A lot bigger. 8.625 inches overall. I was thinking this would come in at about seven and three quarters. No, it's a three and a half inch blade, 8.6 inches overall. That's kind of neat. I'm sure some people find that interesting. I did not know that that was a thing. Maybe it's maybe it's just new to me. Maybe it's not totally brand new. Got some kitchen knives here. I'm not really a kitchen knife person. Kaiser Shard frame lock. Interesting. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm not really a kitchen knife person. God, what the heck? Brian Ty, small twit. Oh my gosh. All right. I, I Listen, I, I know there's not a lot of people just itching to spend two grand on a knife, but we got to look at this. Oh, oh God. Oh my God. That is so beautiful. <laughs> oh man, that is wild. Looks like it was pulled from the earth, like an OTF from an ancient advanced civilization. Wild. Look at that clip. Oh boy. Is that, uh, Oh my God. So it's Damasteel. And then is the front frame also Damasteel? Oh my gosh. What is this picture here? Oh, that's so beautiful. So this is a smaller OTF, 6.75. If anybody doesn't know, Brian Ty is a, a legendary uh, knife, uh, a custom knife maker for sure. Um, check out some some info on Brian Ty if you're not familiar with him. Um, 6.75 inches overall, 2.75 inches on the blade length. Uh, Tanto blade, damage steel, and the blade grind is compound, so it's probably hollow up front f on the initial grind and then uh, flat there uh, out towards the tip. Very beautiful. They've got a few of those, and I imagine that uh, collectors will grab those up quickly. Um, that's pretty cool. Boy, some of these are wild. That is just... Yeah, man, that one is particularly beautiful. Holy schmoly. That's the big one. Let's look. I'm so sorry. There's like there's like maybe two people that are interested in actually purchasing this, right? But uh, just just because I, I have to. That is, God, that is wicked. RWL 34, and then is it laminate? What is this Damacore? Yeah, that's Damacore steel with RWL 34 as the core. Oh man, I am salivating over this right now. That is ridiculously cool. <laughs> Carbon fiber on one, does it say carbon? It says Damacore, the mass is probably, and a carbon fiber thumb slide. The thumb slide is carbon fiber. Wow. <laughs> that is super cool. So aluminum on the front, Damasteel? I'm sorry, Damacore, and then Timascus on this. God, man, that is really cool. $2,500. That's a full custom knife, guys. Handmade OTF. Wild, 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 wild. Whoever picks that up, I am envious of you, good sir. I imagine there are exactly one of each of those. All right, moving on here. I think there's a couple of other things. The MKM Terzola Clap, limited edition carbon fiber uh, tie bolster. That's pretty cool. So that's a uh, Bob Terzola uh, design, damage steel. Um, and then is it menu? Is it made by MKM? I'm not familiar. Yeah, yeah, from MKM knives. So it's a collaboration. That's cool. I've always loved the lines of Trizola, and I love bolsters. Oh man, that's cool. That's nice. That's a classy little knife. Seven point two four inches overall, three inch blade. That's really cool. We'll highlight that one too for sure. I like that. All right, moving on here. 
Hmm. The CRKT Razzlecliff. That's cool. I, I just like the um, the uh, Graham uh, designs. Uh, like the, that's based on the the Razzle from uh, Graham Knives. Um, that's a nice little utility. Like somebody looking for just like a, an inexpensive little. It looks like a steel frame lock. Um, and then you've got that kind of scraper, uh, Warren Cliffy sort of whatever you want to call that. Oh, there's custom heretics there too. Do I dare click on another custom OTF? I kind of want to. I'm going to. <laughs> so this, this whole thing is designed to, to help people find some interesting things that are within the realm of sane in a price range. But I, I can't, I'm a knife guy. I, I can't, I can't help but look at stuff like this. Boy, that's cool. Um, Heretic knives, uh, OTF. They're nine and a quarter inches overall, so this is a combat troodon sized OTF. S thirty five VN uh, mirror polished and <laughs> mammoth ivory inlays. That's cool. Includes an official certificate of badassery and a protective pouch. That is uh, pretty sweet. I like that. All right, I just I, I needed to take a look at this the mammoth ivory. That's very beautiful. Like the pocket clip looks nice. Those are uh, those are cool. Pretty, pretty neat. Um, hey, you can buy the zipper pouch for your Spyderco knives if you want to. That's neat. Uh, let's move on here. I think there were a couple of other things I was hoping to come across. Um, oh, I was hoping, I, I thought that was a button lock for a second. That's cool though. Protec Brend, uh, Brend 3, medium automatic knife. Um, that's a nice looking, ooh, that's a really nice looking uh, Protec there. 8.75 inches overall, so it's a big boy. 3.75 inch blade, 154 cm, which is perfectly fine. I love 154. In fact, that is my favorite steel of all time. Nice, clean look on this guy. Uh, nice pocket clip. Protec always does a wonderful job with their pocket clips. This is an excellent little uh, look. How the uh, the line goes right through the middle of the blade out to the tip. Very cool. Looks like another winner from Protec. I'll be interested to get my hands on that at some point. Um, I don't know if that's new or not. Sorry if it isn't. Um, the Wii Moat. Did we look at this at some point? I don't know. Um, 169 bucks. I think it's worth taking a look at now. Hmm. Oh, okay. This is a little guy. Uh, 6.18 inches overall, 2.66 inches on the blade length S35VN and titanium. Nice clean look from uh, Wii knives. That's pretty cool. If you're into smaller knives, you like titanium frame locks and you like the look of that price, which I think is pretty good considering what Wii generally brings to the table, then check that one out for sure. Uh, some more uh, Ferrum Forge. Wait, no, this is the Odium. Yeah, I think we did actually uh, take a look at this recently maybe on the coming soon or was it released i don't know small knife with a large forward choil let's take a look at this one right here the natural jade the most polarizing of the g10 colors <laughs> um i like the fact that it is small and has this large choil because it means you probably can get a full purchase on it and it looks like there's just enough of an opening hole where you can get your index or in your middle finger in there and do the reverse flick um Pocket clip looks a little bit odd. I kind of wish that that was satin, but okay, whatever. Uh, 5270, you can't go wrong with Civivi. If you're looking for a nice, small budget knife, I've handled a billion Civivis in there. They always, always are high quality. Kaiser Vanguard Laconico Gemini in copper. That's pretty cool. Bowler N690, which is fine for this price range for sure. Uh, all copper. The Gemini is a, is one of the best designs that Kaiser's ever put out, ever. Uh, I, I love the Gemini. Um, I I reviewed it a long time ago. Excellent, uh, you know, profile uh, of the blade, you know, fully flat ground, uh, the nice contoured scales. This is just a good, looks like they've got a liner lock in there. Um, it's countersunk into the, uh, into the copper. That's pretty cool. Nice, simple pocket clip. Just a clean looking knife. You like, you like clean lines. Uh, you've handled some Kaisers and you've experienced their quality before, which it is very, very good. Um, and you like, uh, did I say like copper or like the clean line? I mean, if you, if you like all that stuff, then maybe pick that one up. Yee, we got to look at this big, big bad boy for sure. There's another brand in green. If you guys like that, we got to look at this one. These are going to go. Uh, I keep seeing Ep Epic Snuggle Bunny post his, um, this is an upgraded version of this knife. His is the Mirror Polish Compound. I just, I'm so jealous of that thing. But if you've wanted to get your hands on a Strider Protec, right, you look at this, they, they, there are less expensive versions of this knife. This is an upgraded one, right? These go and then they're gone. 
And by the time you guys have seen this video, this one might be gone. This is a $600 knife. We're looking at Di uh, Damascus, and then you're looking at a burgundy uh, micarta scale, a nice pearl inlay firing button, and then the other side of this is going to be black aluminum. That is a nice looking version of this knife. This is another knife where I'm going to be envious of the person who actually ends up picking this up. And somebody definitely will. <laughs> definitely somebody's going to pick that one up. Um, that is just sick. I love that. All right, let's move on here and see. We'll go to page 10, see if there's anything else that jumps out at me. I wish that I was more into traditionals, guys. But ooh, we got a whole bunch of new uh, Wayfair 247s in. If you've been looking for an interesting version of the Wayfair 247, that one's pretty cool. I might click on that one there real quick. Yeah, it's got the entropic finish on that inlay. Nice uh, sort of dark uh, titanium there. And then a nice, uh, probably the same entropic finish on the pivot collar there. And, ooh, there's a nice close-up look at that. Very cool. And then uh, on the pocket clip as well. Those are These are great. I've reviewed this knife. It is excellent. I love uh, Olamic Cutlery. They do excellent work. And when you pick up one of these, it will be pretty unique. I think their thing is never the same, and that seems to be the case. They make, uh, everything is just slightly different, so there's a little bit of pride of ownership in there. Um, pick up the Ferrum Forge uh, Knife Works Stinger. This is excellent. I haven't reviewed it yet, but it's it's going to get a good review. Um, these are using Nitro V for 90 bucks. Yeah, those are excellent. Absolutely. Anything else? Anything else? Let's go, let's page 11. Just Just one more page. Let's see. Uh, Kaiser Justice, we've talked about those. And is anything else going to stick out? No, you know what? I think that's going to be pretty much it. Let's go back and uh, finish up here on page 10 on these bad boys right here. Guys, I think that's going to be pretty much it. Lots of interesting stuff at Blade HQ. Like I said, you can check out this new arrivals page for yourself by clicking on the first link right down in the description. And then individual links for some of the knives that I highlighted will also be included if you want to skip right to them. Uh, if there's something that you are interested in that is not available yet, they also have a, um, just uh, for your information, coming soon. You can click on that tab, go through their coming soon, and click on email me when available uh, to get notifications for the things that you are interested in. There are a lot of really cool knives that are coming soon that I know are going to get snagged up quickly. So I do these to help people be aware of things as they drop. I know it can be frustrating to want something, not know that it's available, and then miss an opportunity to get it. Uh, but for everybody else who wasn't necessarily interested in buying something, I hope that this video was at least mildly entertaining. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.